Today's webinar will be delivered by our special guest host, Sam Gilbert. In Sam Gilbert's 10 years here at AGI, he created the Segment Propagation Library and worked on the SSA software suite. Now he works for Northrop Grumman, helping plan maneuvers for missions to GEO, to GEO and to the ISS. Here at headquarters, we also have Jens Ramrath, Senior Operational Systems Engineer here at AGI. He's been here for, with us for 15 years. Thank you very much, Maggie. Uh, and thank you to everyone who has uh, come to listen to this webinar. Uh, as you said, I'm Sam Gilbert, working for Northrop Grumman. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, some of my experiences working with Astrogator and, and coming at uh, Astrogator as, as a tool similar to how a develop, developer would come look at it as a, another library to use uh, just in their bag of tricks uh, to, to be able to get various jobs done. Uh, in this webinar, we're going to start off with just background of you know, what Astrogator classically is, but also uh, what it can do, some, and some challenges that, that come along with that. Uh, then sort of a brief overview of sort of uh, as, a, as a software developer, sort of how that makes me think a little bit differently of how Astrogator works and, and can be used. Go through several examples of uh, various applications I've written that have leveraged Astrogator or, or its uh, counterpart in, in SDK components, the center propagation library in various ways. And then we'll start wrapping it up with uh, just a couple little tips and tricks that uh, I've learned that you, you, you might have already have, uh, figured out, but if not, yeah, hopefully you'll find them useful. So when, when we talk about Astrogator, most people generally think of, you know, what, what does Astrogator do? It's for trajectory design, specifically maneuver planning. But uh, realize that it, that sort of like a lot of like many of the other tools in SDK, it's just one, it can be one piece of a much bigger puzzle. You can use it just to find events along a trajectory. You can, you can actually use it to stitch ephemeris files together. So, you know, sort of if you do a, multiple orbit determinations and want to make a single long definitive. You can also do a what if analysis and, and you know, have it be just one step in a much bigger process. Um, and then, uh, so as I said, this, as a software developer at times, uh, using Astrogator and made me wonder like, how can, do, do some of the skills of being a software developer transfer over to, be, to working with Astrogator? And uh, so, sort of one of the, Key components of being a good software developer is trying to make your code reusable. And in a similar way, you want to make your you want to make your segments reusable. You want to be able to script as much as you can, both in and out of SDK. You want to try to save common sequences as auto, as automatic as, as auto sequences. So, um, and also you just want to try to define things once and only once. So that way you're not you're scrambling through all of your segments when you need to change whatever your desired longitude is or some other constraints. A similar thing in, in uh, writing code is that you want to make your code readable. You don't know how many times a, a developer, you know, goes, reads some code that hasn't been touched in months and, and goes, who wrote this code? Only to find out that it was them. So when, when making your trajectories and sequences, try to make it very clear what each sequence does, either by uh, just labeling it well and, and write, write, having descriptions or notes, or better yet, just try to break out, you, you know, try not, to, try not to have each segment do just one thing at a time. You kind of can't always do that. You know, it's usually better to combine maneuvers instead of you do them separately. But you know, but but uh, when you can, just try to make it very clear and explicit what each segment uh, does. So one of the uh, missions that I've been working on or helping plan is the uh, our, our mission extension vehicle, where we're going, where we will send up a satellite, take it, send it to Geo, where it will rendezvous with an out of fuel but otherwise healthy Geo communication satellite. We will harpoon that satellite and provide station keeping services and end of life uh, for it, you know, drag it off to the graveyard. Um, and in all of these examples that I talked about with the MEV, the nominal trajectory was made with Astrogator. Uh, and oftentimes I'm working with a, uh, an ephemeris file made from that trajectory. And we're going to start with the, talking about the follow segment because uh, as it turns out, it is amazingly useful. Uh, when I was making the second propagation library, I was asking around, hey, what features are more important than others? And I was surprised at how passionately several people said that they need the follow segment. And as it turns out, I've used it quite a lot for my work here. Uh, this is the segment that you can use to find the events in a trajectory. Um, it's also uh, the one that you can use to stitch ephemeris files together. You make, you make two uh, satellites with 
that follow a .e file in a, just a normal SDK, but then you just follow the one with a follow segment, and you follow the other with a second segment, and then you export that kind of ephemeris. Not, and they're stitched together with all the reference frames taken care of. You can even sort of propagate if there's a gap. Uh, it, it just is a very handy, useful uh, tool uh, that, that can be leveraged across many disciplines. Um, so one of the things that I had to write was a sequence of events generator. Like already this year, uh, I, I've, we've had three geo missions. Um, and apparently it's my team's responsibility to let everybody know when the satellite's going to cross apogee or perigee uh, in its, um, in, during its ascent, uh, when it's going to acquire a signal, lose signal, when it's going to you know, be in the shadow. Uh, also, you know, we don't want to you know, blast other geo satellites, so you need to, you know, we need to turn off our transmitters uh, for radio frequency interference. Um, like I said, we had the ascent trajectory already made in Astrogator. Um, but my boss tasked me with creating something to, to generate just a list of these events uh, that was better than what we had. And ultimately, it looked something like this, where uh, we would have the dates of the events, you know, wh what kind of the event was, and then so, sort of a, a chart there showing you know, when, when we have COM access and when we don't. Now, this could have been done with half a dozen different computations of SDK or components to get these events. But that you know, would be just a whole lot of work doing you know, what is ultimately one thing, finding events, and realizing that stopping additions are essentially just event finders. They basically wait for, you know, sample the propagation until something happens and then stop propagation. But you don't actually need to stop propagation. You can uh, just log that actual event, but then keep on going. Uh, and for this, I used the follow segments in and stopping additions and segment propagation library, mostly because I was writing a application anyway to do this, so I might as well just you know, use, uh, go with more pro program, um, more, more developer-centric approach. Um, and basically, each event would, would be one stopping condition that uses a, a, a code callback to log that, that it found something, but then keep on going. Uh, I had to create an access stopping condition in components. Uh, it's not quite there yet. Um, and then I just made one, one stopping condition for each kind of event. When we enter penumbra, that was that was one stopping condition. When we exit, that's another stopping condition. When we have uh, when com access starts and when it ends, those are we're each one stopping condition each. And this got quite large with over 900 stopping conditions in one case. But you know, again, it just did it, and we were able to get those very handy charts uh, telling us when each event happens. Um, and this was just a case of where the follow signal was just one part of a bigger puzzle. Uh, there's also the uh, MEV avoidance application where in the couple of hours before the MEV docks with its target, it's using its uh, thrusters to get nice and close. But what if that engine dies? Will the target vehicle be safe? Um, and this was a case where, uh, again, with segment propagation library, we, uh, follow, we followed the nominal trajectory up into a certain point in time. Um, and at that point in time, we would then just do normal free drift, uh, no, no thrusting, just a, a simple propagate segment. And from that, we would compute the uh, letters propagate out for a time and then find the minimum distance and the time of closest approach. But the handy thing with components was that this could be done in a parallel for loop. So it was using all the threads on my machine to, to do this computation uh, very quickly uh, for a range of times, you know, from what, you know, from the start of the approach up until a couple minutes uh, away from the actual docking. Um, and then finally, after that parallel for loop finished, uh, we could do it, we could automatically have the investigator sequence do the avoid the, the, the plant vehicle's avoidance maneuver to, so that if, if it had to, if, if it had to get out of the way, uh, what would have what would it have to do, what direction should it go? And here's just a sort of a fake little screenshot where it, um, the green the green lines are the nominal trajectory are the trajectories that don't collide with the pink keep out box that corresponds to the client vehicles, uh, the, the, the targets keep out box, mostly, direct, mostly because of the solar arrays. And the red lines are the ones that go through it, the, and the green ones are the ones that uh, pass harmlessly around it. Um, the next sort of example application was the uh, bulk target segment pl plugin. This is a UI plugin to SDK that basically will look at your your uh, 
look at your uh, sequence and find all the target segments, and it will go through recursively. It'll find the ones that, that it'll drill down, and it gives you these buttons to tell them to run the nominal profiles, you know, or to set them to, to run the active profiles. Because really, what it, what it came down to was for the missions to the ISS where, where we do a resupply, there were many times where um, our workflow involved, you know, we, we get a new OD, a, a new definitive state. We propagate from that state, but we need to retarget all of our things because the orbit shifted ever so slightly. And, and then when we're done, we have to switch, switch them all back to apply and run nominal because we, we need to propagate to, to generate various products. And that gets tedious when there are so many targeting segments. We, um, you know, it's, it's really easy to miss one of those one of those uh, targeters and have it run applied when we wanted to to actually target something new. And so this plugin became just very handy because we just check all of our targeters to tell them to run uh, their differential correctors and then switch them back. Uh, and really this all came down to just having a simple recursive function that just looped through all the segments and then had a, a, a little bit of code in them that uh, you could say like, oh, if this segment that I'm working on right now is a target segment, do this thing, otherwise ignore it and move on. I will just say that I was kind of hoping to, or I would love it if this would be more of like showing you the code and going into detail like that, but just there isn't time. You know, there's so, so many fun things that, that you know can be done, but yeah. this is more just a high level overview of what can be done. Um, but onto the uh, tips and tricks. And again, like some of these things you may have already run into, it might be useful, but uh, you know, hopefully there'll be something here that you have, that you can go, oh, that'll be uh, handy next time I have to do that. So the first one is um, using uh, the scripting tool to just make a lot of things easier. Um, one thing that, that I've had it done in a certain station, station keeping case is you know, we don't really know what our target longitude is or our target inflation. It's gonna keep changing as mission uh, requirements get more and, and better defined. So uh, you know, there've been plenty of times where you know, you're targeting your inclination in five different targeters or, or your or stop, stopping missions. And then when it changes, you have to go and find them all and change them all. That got old fast. Um, but you can use uh, user variables to uh, hold the uh, to hold the desired value. You know, name it, say, like mission inclination, where you just set it to whatever your desired value is. And then the second step would be to create a script calculation object. That's the difference between the current inclination and that one. And optionally, you can use the absolute value if that makes sense for your problem. Um, and then for your stopping additions, your stopping constraints, and, uh, and, and your differential corrector constraints, you can just use that script difference calculation object. And that way, you're always targeting zero, not whatever your, your number is. And that way, you only have to change it once uh, in your initial state segment or, or wherever you're defining your user variable just to save time going forward. The next sort of, and this also gets really handy in the scripting object because, or in, in the scripting tool. The, the way that I've tended to do it is, is I have an initial scripting tool uh, wrapping my, as a profile that's wrapped around my initial state segment. And it, it's in there where I, where I set the uh, initial values. The next general tip is speculative propagation. So at one point I was looking at a, a friend's Asteroid sequence, and he had this. He would propagate forward to some event, and he would do this backwards propagate, and then do propagate forward again. And this just seemed odd to me. Uh, and what he wanted to do is he wanted to do a maneuver that was several hours before some event. So, he, so that's exactly what he did. He propagated forward, he propagated backwards, and went forward again. But this has problems. It's error prone. Uh, it, there's Although it's almost always going to be close, there's no guarantee that the integrator will, will step on the same so spots going backwards and forwards. Uh, and it's possible that there could be some drift, especially for a longer or more complicated backwards and forwards. Uh, it's also wasteful. You, 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 you just conceptually, you shouldn't have to do that backwards sequence. Um, and also, there are some subtle gotchas where if that initial forward segment was much longer than the backward and, and what's left, you could definitely get into cases where there's some ephemeris out there that uh, you know, that that's after the real end of your segment, but still gets uh, fitted into 
the overall ephemeris that astrogator resolves. And there just has to be a better way, and sure enough, there is. Um, the first way to do it is to use a sequence that uh, does not generate ephemeris and passes the initial state to the next segment. So in, uh, in the case here, uh, in, in the list of segments that you see here, uh, there's that sequence that doesn't actually contribute ephemeris to the overall trajectory, but the targeter can still target things at the end of, of that segment. And then you just follow it up with the segment that's going to do the actual stopping and continue on forward. You just have to remember to uh, set those two options that, that are circled there uh, in, in the graphic. And the other way is to turn off the stopping condition and rerun. And this is, ex I think, exactly what that turn off stopping condition was, was made for, where um, you basically configure your, your, in this case, the yellow propagate segment with two stopping conditions. You turn on the one that, that goes out into the future, in, into the nebulous future. You do whatever targeting you need to do on that segment. You then turn that stopping condition off and then run your target uh, and run your sequence once. Um, and this, I would definitely recommend this way or, or the, the previous way with, with the uh, back or with the do not with the no, no generate ephemeris. But honestly, you know, both of those are valid and work, can work well. I generally would not recommend the first way of going forward and backward again. I can't think of a case where that would be useful, but if you, if you do, please let me know. And uh, in talking to other people, they have found other ways to do this exact same. Uh, it solved this exact same problem, which is uh, it just I just find it completely interesting that how there's so many different ways to do the same problem. Uh, the, the next tip is a day of the week stopping condition or constraint. Um, this can be done uh, with uh, scalars in the vector geometry tool or analysis workbench, sorry, or it can be done with cal calculation objects. Although I will say that prior to 11.2, it could only be done with the calc objects in Astrogator. Uh, to start with, you make a fixed epoch object on Sunday or whatever you want your zero day to be. Um, th this is either a time component or just a uh, epic uh, component in the calc objects. Um, you then make a second object, either calc ob scalar calc object or scalar VGT object that does modulus division on the days from that fixed epoch, thereby giving you a zero, one, two, three, four, five, or six of what day of the week you are. And then you can use that however you want, uh, as, as a constraint, as a, uh, you know, as a, as a often I use it as a stopping condition constraint. I want to stop at the first perigee when on Tuesday. So I, I would um, have the be a stopping condition constraint uh, where it must equal two. And the final tip and trick is to limit the length of a finite maneuver. Oftentimes the engines have a maximum burn length. Um, and the first way I tried this was with two duration stopping conditions which kind of works. You can, you can target one and then the other one is just, you know, they're fixed. But if you do that, you can't center the burn because it doesn't know which duration to use to center the burn with. But then I remembered, oh wait, there's the maximum propagation time. There's that thing that always stops propagating after a hundred days that always annoys me, but hey, this is where it actually comes in handy. Um, but if you do use the maximum propagation time, there's a couple of things to watch out for. You first have to uncheck the duration and epic stopping conditions over at max prop time so that way it actually uses maximum propagation time. And finally, it's possible that the differential corrector could get confused if you're not careful. Um, you, you may want to set your targeter to continue even if modifying the control does not change the constraints because it, it will still try to change your duration stopping condition, your, your duration, your burn duration. It just won't do anything because the segment will cut off early. You can also work around this by setting a very large maximum step size if that works for your problem because it'll just step way past it, uh, way past what the limit is, go, oh, and, and just give up because it's, it's not changing the constraints anymore. And, and that uh, is about it. So please, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please, I'll happily answer them. Well, it looks like we have our first question. Um, how can I get trained on these tools? Uh, that's uh, about if, uh, if you want. Um, we. Of course, we have our regular training, our integration training, but we also have a, a lot of resources to help you get started that come with the help and that are on our website. So we have a few uh, custom applications that come with the install. Um, there's a huge training section in the, in the help, and there's a, a significant number of code snippets in the help as well. 
So those should help you uh, get started automating everything in SDK, whether it's Astrogate or something else. And you know, if you ever stuck, you can't figure out what to do. You can just you know just contact support, and uh, they'll help you out. Thanks, Jens. And I will say that those uh, code snippets help out tremendously. Yeah, I, I I usually have like two or three web pages up with just various ones of those as I'm developing things. Perfect. Thanks, Sam. And we have another question. What licenses are required to build these applications? Um, I can get that as well. Uh, it it kind of depends on how you're doing it. If you have an external tool that connects to SDK, you need an integration license. But otherwise, you can, you know, after that, you just need whatever license you already have. So if you can, if you can do things through the GUI, you can also do it through, uh, you know, in an automated way with the same license. Um, you can also write a UI plugin that basically is, uh, you know, it's kind of the same as the as the external application, except it's inside of SDK. And those you don't need an integration integration license for. So, you know, either one of those works. So write your own little tool, and for those you need an integration license. Or if you build something inside SDK, you know, it could be a UI plugin. It could be just a simple HTML script that you run inside SDK, and then you do not need a, an integration license. Thank you, Jens. Looks like that's all the questions that we had. Um, Sam, do you mind switching over to the last slide, please? Not a problem. Thank you. So today, the products we mentioned were Astrogator and Segment Propagation Library. To learn more, um, you can check out all of the rest of our trainings on agi.com slash training. If you want help or just to talk to an engineer, please email info at agi.com and make sure to look for future webinars. Thank you so much for joining this webinar. For those questions we didn't get to, we will be answering those individually after we sign off. Make sure to check out our next webinar on addressing small satellite communications issues on August 2nd. Registration is now live at agi.com under the events tab. See you next time.